Hey everyone, Wayne Fox here. A quick video today about a problem that I've struggled with off and on since Monterey, and that's getting my software of choice, which is called ScreenFlow, more on that in a minute, but it wouldn't recognize my video input devices. Now I have a Fuji camera, it's connected to a Blackmagic Ultra Studio 4K Mini. I also have a CamLink 4K, which a lot of times I hook up to my Sony RX100. I have a couple of USB-C input devices as well, and those haven't been much of a problem, but the two HDMI feeds suddenly wouldn't be recognized by ScreenFlow, and QuickTime doesn't seem to see them either. Forced me to use kind of a workaround, which is a pain. I actually had to use Blackmagic software to capture the video and then I had to use compressor to compress it down to a usable size because that was bringing in as ProRes 422 which for what I do in these talking head videos is way more than I need. With Monterey I struggled with it and I finally gave up and I had to use the Blackmagic software solution and then when Ventura came along it seemed to start working fine. No real explanation for it. Recently when I upgraded to my new MacBook Pro and had to upgrade to Sonoma suddenly it was broken again. Now, by the time I bought the new MacBook Pro, Sonoma was already on 14.1. And at 14.1, this seems where this broke with a lot of people, where their software would no longer see their input device. I would think OBS finally was able to work around that. I don't know about Ecamm, but QuickTime doesn't see it, and it still doesn't see the Blackmagic device. But I found the solution to get my software of choice ScreenFlow to see it and other video programs might be able to see it better once you do this. And of course, there's a little bit of an explanation why. And I thought I'd just get into that, explain how to do it. It's actually a really simple fix. And if you're having trouble getting your software to see your inputs, then this might solve your problem for you. So I've searched for this solution constantly. As I mentioned under Monterey, I wasn't able to ever get my Blackmagic device to work. and I got spoiled under Ventura because it worked all the time with ScreenFlow. And since I got my new MacBook Pro, I'm going, oh, I don't want to go through this again. I have done one or two videos with the old, you know, capture with your Blackmagic software. Anyway, this article, the title is exactly what I was looking for. And I assume it's pretty recent article because I haven't found it before. But basically, this explains why it's a problem and what you need to do if you need to work around it. So what happens under 14.1 is Apple is expecting system extensions that are created by the video input device makers, such as Blackmagic, to recognize and honor some privacy settings. It looks to me like one of those specifically has to do with the ability for the Apple to know you are using a video device to monitor and bring in video, and it can turn the little light on your FaceTime camera on to let you know a video device is being used other than your FaceTime camera. Anyway, what you have to do is pretty straightforward and pretty simple, and that's to reset it to what's called legacy mode. The steps are pretty straightforward. If you scroll down in the article, it will specifically tell you how to do that. First, you restart it in recovery mode. And if you have a Silicon Mac, then these are the steps here. You just basically turn your computer off, turn it back on, and hold the power button down. If it's an Intel Mac, I think you uh, hold Command R down while you start your Mac up. Once you get to recovery mode and you'll go to your utilities menu, open terminal, and you'll type in this command here. Now the challenge with this is you can't copy and paste it anywhere because you're in recovery mode. So you really have to type it out by hand and you've got to get every space, every dash, every little thing perfect. If you make a mistake, you'll get a screen that looks something like this with some kind of an error and explanation. You can use the mouse to highlight your entry, copy and paste it, but you cannot use the mouse to position your cursor to make your corrections. You have to use the arrow keys and the delete key. It took me a couple of tries to get this right, but once I did, I received this message here, which indicated it was correct, and you get this warning, and we'll see in a minute, you can also see this warning in the system settings panel. Then you restart your computer, and once you do that, you should be able to see your device. Now there's one really easy way to tell it works. Let me just jump on my computer and I'll walk you through that. And then let me talk a little bit about why I like ScreenFlow if you're curious. Okay, so to check to see if it's working, just go to your system settings and you go to privacy and security and you go to camera. You notice at the top, it says when using your camera with an unsupported plugin, the camera privacy indicator will not be displayed in the menu bar. So that's what leads me to think this whole thing is simply about turning that little light on 
or the little thing. I think there's a little thing that pops up in your menu bar. If that little statement's there, then the legacy support's been restored and you should be able to see your devices. Now, I found that Camlink 4K could then be seen by QuickTime. It wasn't before, but QuickTime still does not see my Ultra Studio 4K Mini. Now, to me, that's not a big deal because I mainly want ScreenFlow to see it. Now, I thought I would just kind of finish this video talking a little bit about why I like ScreenFlow for this type of thing. I don't need any of the real powerful features of a Final Cut Pro or an Adobe Premiere. I'm really just doing these talking head videos. And the advantage of ScreenFlow is I can capture a whole bunch of different inputs simultaneously. So they're all synced up in different uh, timeline or different uh, tracks on my timeline. For example, I've captured up to four video feeds at the same time, two HDMI feeds, two USB-C feeds, as well as my screen. ScreenFlow is actually really good at that, and it's been a really effective tool. That's the main reason I like it for this kind of thing. It's uh, simple, really good for this particular type of video. Now, ScreenFlow's got a lot of really great features, and I think I might do a few short videos on ScreenFlow to throw in my channel. I found a lot of really handy shortcuts, which took me a while, and I might do like the 10 shortcuts that I use all the time, some videos like that. So if you stumble onto ScreenFlow and wanna learn a little bit more about it, I might some put some videos on that on my channel. Anyway, if you're having trouble getting your Mac to see your video devices, Hopefully this helps. I think this was the cause of the problem and it's fixed it all for me. Until next time, thanks for watching. See ya.